Now, module two is one of the best modules in the course because in module two, right? So here are the modules. Okay, module two, right away they have you, hey, check out the switches and configure the switches, right? Um, configure some devices, learn how to get into Packet Tracer and start doing stuff. This is a hands-on curriculum where you learn how to configure routers and switches and learn how to do all of the basic settings that you would need to set up a network, right? Set up computers, interconnect computers with switches, route from one network to another or route to the internet by connecting into a router, how to set up VLANs, how to set up different subnets. It's an exciting curriculum. All right, so as you go through the chapters, right? So we'll say here, uh, what, why should I take this module? What do I learn in this module? Okay, I'll skip that for now. Cisco iOS Access, you're gonna click on these pages. You're gonna work through the curriculum. All right, first of all, it starts off, hey, right? Operating systems. Yeah, we're using Windows, right? We've got our computer hardware, right? On, on top of the hardware is the operating system, and the operating system has the kernel, which interfaces with the hardware. The kernel is the core of the operating system of Windows, let's say. And then you have your shell, your user shell. And there's two types of shells generally. There's a graphical user interface, and then there's the command line interface. All right, well, guess what? Routers and switches, same thing right? Right. The routers and switches have the same thing. They don't have a graphical user interface like Windows, right? It doesn't have an operating a Windows type of operating system, but it does have uh, basically the capability to let you interface with the device, right? So you're going to go through this here. And then right here, this is an important one, right here in section 2.1.4, it says when you take out a switch or a router, you have to configure it. You have to interface with it. And typically with Cisco routers and switches, you're going to do that by the first time, the first time you manage the switch, the first time you connect to the switch, you're going to do it through a console connection, all right, a console connection. So you're going to attach a cable from your computer to the switch. You're going to attach a cable from your laptop to the switch or the router, and you're going to console in. This connection does not require an IP address, okay? And we call that out of band, right? It's an out of band connection because the device will not have an IP address and you don't need to go through an IP address. Now, once you configure the router or switch with an IP address, then you can use a tool like PuTTY and Secure Shell into the router or the switch over the network because the router or switch will have an IP address. All right, so this is what we call in-band connection. So console connection is out of band, meaning the router switch doesn't have an IP address, right? It's a serial connection that does not require an IP address. And then an in-band connection is where you use SSH and you secure shell, or you could use Telnet, which is insecure. It's not really recommended, but you can do it if you're in an isolated network um, and you go over the network. Basically, you go through an IP address your computer has an IP address, the router, the switch has an IP address, and you connect in, all right? Now, to do Secure Shell and Telnet, you're going to need a term terminal emulation program like PuTTY, which is the one that we typically use in class, PuTTY, or TerraTerm, which you can also download for free, or if you're on like a Windows box, you could use Secure CRT, which, uh, I mean, uh, if you have a Mac, I think. I think Secure CRT is for Mac. Let's see here. Um, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. So anyway, right? So Cisco iOS Access. Then at the end of this subsection is a little quiz to see if you're comprehending what you just read, right? Um, you have a new switch that needs to be configured. You're going to console it. Right, um, right. It gave you a special cable. Okay, if you have a special cable, you're consoling it. Right. So the special cable. Uh, let me see if I have one over here. Yeah, I do. The special cable looks like this. All right. Okay. 
just get it like, let me get this special cable here. All right. All right, let me uh, stop sharing. Okay, the special cable. Hey, thanks for joining me. Right on. All right. I'm grabbing the special cable. All right, here is the special cable. This is a console cable. All right, the console cable has, this is a serial connection on one end, right? So this would go into your COM port. Now, your your probably your laptop doesn't have a COM port. Probably your PC doesn't have a COM port. This is a serial port, right? On the other end of the cable, notice it's kind of a flat cable. Let me turn off, uh, blur my background. So there's the uh, DB9, uh, serial DB9, nine pins, right? It goes in a COM port. It's a flat cable. Cisco invented this cable, this console cable. And the other end has an RJ45 on it, but it's not an Ethernet cable. It's a console cable. So this part goes in the console port on the router or switch. This port goes on your computer. However, it's the COM port, serial port. And guess what? Nobody has a serial port anymore on their computers. So you need an adapter. So this is a serial DB9 adapter, COM port adapter to USB, because USB is a serial port. So I basically put these together like that. I could tighten it down, right? And I can get a, I can plug this USB port uh, this USB end, right? This is like a, a USB A, right? I could plug this into my laptop, and then the other end goes into the Cisco switch or the Cisco router, and you have a console connection, right? Now I don't have a router switch on me right now at this moment. It would have been a good thing to bring one over here to show that to you, but I've got other videos where I do that, and maybe we could do that in person next week if you if you come to the lab in the Pioneer Building on a Friday or Saturday, and we can do that for real. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. All right, so I'm sharing my screen. So that's what we're doing right here, right? And then if I scroll down in the curriculum here, I'm answering these questions. Um, which access method would be the most appropriate in-band access to the iOS over a network connection? Well, Telnet or SSH is used over the network using IP addresses. Now the auxiliary port can also go over a network, but it's it's meant for connecting in with a modem and using dial-up, and we don't typically do that anymore. All right, so that's it for Cisco iOS navigation. You go here, or Cisco iOS, to iOS navigation, and this is where you now want to get in and start consoling into the router and switch and doing it. And you can see here in the chapter, it's got videos, right? The videos are good. Um, it's got check your understanding. It's got a syntax checker, right? If I go to the next, the commands that you can put in with the switcher router, the iOS command structure, the internet work operating system, right? All of this stuff, they've got videos. It, it's pretty good, right? And then you can see here, there's the first packet tracer, navigate the iOS. But you're going to go all the way down here. You're going to read all of this. And eventually, you're going to get to this section, section 2.4. And when you get down here, let's see here. There's another video. And eventually, you are going to get to a packet tracer that I want you to do. Ah, here it is. Packet tracer configure initial switch settings. So, But right now, we're just going to practice it in packet tracer. So if you have packet tracer open, I'm going to basically go over a lot of the stuff that you're going to learn in this section right now just by opening Packet Tracer and doing it with you guys. So I already have Packet Tracer open. Okay, I have it right here. So let me close this. Here's Packet Tracer. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And I think I've already made my font in my command line a little bit bigger. Let me just double check. Font. Yeah, I've already made it a little bit bigger, which is good. I'll make it uh, 14 points. We'll see. That might be too big, but we'll try it. Okay. So here's Packet Tracer. When you open up Packet Tracer, you have to log in with your Netacad account, username, and password. And we're going to practice this. So 
This is a simulation. This is not the real thing, but this is what it's going to be. All right. So once you have Packet Tracer open, right, this is what you're going to do. You're going to say, okay, let's simulate this whole thing. I want a console into a switch. So first of all, I need a PC. So I go over here and click on end devices. I'm right down here. End devices, there's a PC. Click on the PC and put the PC right there in the in the workspace. Okay, so there's your computer. Right. Then we're going to go to networking devices, right? If I click here, then I have routers. Here are the switches. So you click here and then you click here. And now you have switches. We want a 2960 series switch, which is the first switch. So you click here and you click there. Right now, once again, end devices, PC, laptop, server. Okay. Oh, I want to get rid of those things. Delete, delete them. Delete, delete, delete. All right, that's with the little delete button tool. Then back to the pointer, the select tool, right? PC, switch, zoom in. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. All right. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to connect the PC to the switch. Now we're going to connect from the serial port on the PC to the console port on the switch. To do this, we're going to need a cable. This is where you get your cables right here. Where the lightning bolt is, these are all your cables. Remember how I just showed you that your console cable is a baby blue cable? Well, that's this one right here. Right? If I hover over it, it says console, right? Console cable, copper straight through. Uh, this is a, a straight through ethernet cable. This is an ethernet crossover cable, fiber optic cable, a phone line, coax cable, like, uh, like for a, um, a cable TV type of cable, um, serial cables, octal, you know, all you, you're, gonna, you're really going to just use console cables and Ethernet cables mostly, right? Just these two cables mostly. All right, so console cable, right? I got the console cable here. I click on the PC, and you've got four choices here. This RS-232, that's the serial port. This is USB, USB, and fast Ethernet. We're going to connect it to the RS-232 port. We're going to pretend like our PC has a serial connection and we don't need an adapter, and we're connecting it to that uh, COM port. And then you're going to stretch the cable over to the switch, click on the switch, and then you have choices here. This switch has two gigabit Ethernet interfaces and 24 fast Ethernet switch ports. These are all of the switch ports on the switch. There's 24... 100 meg ports, and there's two gigabit ports. And then way up here at the top is the console port. That's the console port. So that's where you want to put it into. You don't want to put it in the ethernet ports. You want to put it in the console port. All right, so that's like basically the same thing as me saying, hey, I connected one end to my PC. I connected the other end to the console port on the switch. And now I want to you know, use my PC to go into the interface and go to the command line interface. The command line interface is the shell, so I can interface with the switch operating system. The switch has its own operating system. It's called Cisco IOS. It's the inter-network operating system. And to access it, we're going to open up the PC. And when you're in the PC, you can click on desktop tools. Right? So physical, this is what physically the the PC looks like, right? There's the, the power button, which you can actually turn on and off. There's your ethernet port where you connect your cable, right? Things like that. There's some USB ports here. But what we want to do is we want to go to our desktop and look at all our apps. These are our applications. And the application we want to look at is our terminal application, right? This is at our uh, terminal application. This would be like us using PuTTY, okay? So like if I was doing this on my actual computer, right, I would use PuTTY, which I downloaded for free. And if I open up PuTTY, 
I would say I want to use not an SSH connection because that's in-band. I want a serial connection. And you can see serial connection and says COM1, right? Like you're attached to the COM port, right? So serial connection. And then I would click open and I would connect into the router or the switch, right? But in this tool here, it doesn't say PuTTY. It says terminal, which means terminal emulator, which PuTTY is a terminal emulator application. So you open up terminal. These are the settings, the bits per second, the data bits. The settings are already put in for you. In the old days, if you wanted to get your CCNA and you went to take the CCNA certification test, you had to have these settings memorized. And there was always a question on the Cisco CCNA certification exam where you had to know what the settings are. You don't have to know it anymore. You just click OK. It won't be on the exam, pretty much. <laughs> Watch you get on the exam and you curse me. Um, and then you'll see this. I'm just going to stretch out this window. Your text will be smaller than mine because I increased my font size. Right? I increased my font size so I could make it easier for the video. All right? You'll click in here, and you can see this is the output from the switch booting up. And I'm just going to hit Enter. And you can see, you should see right away the switch command prompt. Right, This is a command line interface. To configure the switch, you put in commands line by line. All right, So there it is. It says switch. It has no name. It just, I'm switch. And then there's the command prompt. All right, And this is what we call user exec mode. This is user exec mode. In user exec mode, you can put a question mark in, and it'll show you what commands you have available to you. You could telnet from here. You could run a trace route. You could do a ping. <clears throat> you could connect to another terminal. You could also use some show commands to show information about your system. right? So I could use a show command here. What we're going to do with this is we're going to say, hey, okay, right, I'm, I'm here. This is cool. Notice, too, my PC does not have an IP address. I never put an IP address on the PC. I never put a – there's no IP address on the switch, right? There's no IP address on this PC. There's no IP address on the switch. And yet, take a look, right? We can get in and we can access the switch, all right? So let's try the show commands. So show, space, and let's see which show commands are available to us. Put a question mark. You can see that there are some show commands available. We can look at the ARP table. We can look at the system clock, right? So show clock. We'll say, all right, space bar. Show clock. And you can see it says that it's 1993, um, right, and uh, timestamp. Monday, March 1st, 1993. That's not good, right? Um, because that is not the actual time. So we should probably change our clock, which we'll do in a minute. Um, the other thing we could do is we could say show version to see the version of the switch and the operating system. So show version and hit enter. And you can see here, you get the output, right? This is all the output from that. So right here, I put in show version. The next line, it says Cisco iOS software. This is a Catalyst 2960 series switch, right? The iOS is version 15, uh, you know, SE4. Uh, what else do we want to know about this? Okay, the bootloader um, version, the bootloader version is 12.2. Um, the switch has been up for 39 minutes. The operating system for the switch is completely in a single file, and that file is in flash memory, and this is the file name. So this is the, the entire operating system is in one file. It's called C2960 landbase K9MZ150-2, which means it's iOS 15 revision 2, and this is a binary file. It's a dot .bin file. All right, and what else do we want to know about this? Um, also, if we scroll down here, you'll see that um, there's one virtual Ethernet interface, 24 fast Ethernet interfaces, two gigabit Ethernet interfaces, okay, 
there is 64 kilobytes of flash NVRAM. This is NVRAM, non-volatile RAM. Um, the Ethernet, you know, some things about the, the switch, right? Good, good stuff. All right. Um, down here, once again, the switch, 26 ports, the model of the switch, the iOS version, and the switch image, LAN base K9. The configuration register we'll talk about uh, later. It's set to 0xF right now. now. That's different. It's not what I was expecting. 0xF, that must be new. All right. To get to so this mode, if I put in a question mark, I can see these commands. You cannot configure the switch with any of these commands. If you want to configure the switch, you've got to go to a higher level mode. So to do that, you use the enable command, which turns on privileged commands. So what we'll do is we'll say enable and hit enter. And now the prompt changes from this greater than sign to a hash, right? And so now you're in what we call privileged mode. Before it was user exec mode, now it's privileged mode, all right? Or privileged exec mode. And from here, if I put a question mark, there are more commands available, right? So you'll see here, hey, these are different commands, right? One of them is called configure, which allows you to go to another mode called configuration mode where you can actually configure the switch, right? It says more down here. So you hit the space bar to see the rest and you can see the rest of the commands, right? You can use the write command to save the configuration, um, right? There's a bunch of things you can do, right? You can also do show commands from this mode. So right now we're in privilege mode, right? And uh, right, and so, right? If you wanna turn off privileged commands, you use disable. So let's try that. So I say disable. Now I'm back to user ex exec mode, enable. Now I'm in privileged exec mode, right? Notice how the command prompt changes. Let's look, let's do another show command. Um, all right, how's this going so far? Following along okay? Pretty interesting. Eh, what do you think? Okay so far? Yeah. Thumbs up? Not too boring? All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna say, show, run, and basically, if I do a show here, right, I can get command help. So I say show, which is the first part of the show command, but then the show command takes arguments. It takes additional things. So if I hit space and then question mark, you can see that I can show information about CDP, about the clock, about DHCP. Notice there's a lot more choices. And what I'm interested in, I'll hit space bar here, is the running configuration, the current operating configuration of the switch. So to see that, what I do is I say, okay, show, and then I'll say R. And notice that there's only one option for the show command, which has a which has running config is the only option that starts with an R. So I could say show R, and then I could say tab, and it'll it should auto-complete. Uh, but it didn't. Let's see here. Tab. There it is. Tab. Running config. Show running config. Right. That's called tab completion. Also, I could just do you know command shortening since there's only one option that has an R in it. I could just say show R and I or show R U and hit enter and it'll do it. It'll do what I ask. Right, it's command shortening. It, it's actually doing a show running dash configuration because it's the only option that starts with the R. This is the configuration. So I hit space bar. Here's all the configurations for the switch ports. You can see that they only have the default on all the switch ports, so there's nothing really there, right? And you can see there's the VLAN interface. This is the virtual interface. It does not have an IP address, and it's shut down. And this is the console line for consoling in the console line console zero this is how we console in remember that when i consoled in and i opened up my terminal 
I automatically entered the switch. That's because there's no configurations underneath line console zero. If I want to put a password on the switch, they will go below line console zero. Line VTY zero to four and line VTY five to 15, this is effectively virtual terminal lines for SSHing and um, telnetting into the switch. And those also, they have one config on them, login, right? So if I try to telnet in or SSH in, it's going to prompt me for a login, right? It's at least going to do that. It's not going to let me in. It's going to say, you got a login. But the rest of the configurations are not present. All right, more. Hit the space bar again. And you can see there's the end of the configuration. So once again, that was show RU, hit tab, show running dash config, and you've got the running configuration of the switch. Now, this configuration is running in RAM. So basically what the switch does is when it boots up, it takes the configuration file from NVRAM, it loads it into RAM, and so the configuration is, is running right now in RAM. So if you make a change here, it happens instantly on the switch. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to change the host name of the switch. So what we'll do is to do that, we need to use another command here called configure space question mark. And under configure, you can see right now there's only, if I put a configure space and a question mark, there's only one option that goes with configure and it's terminal configure from the terminal. So that means that um, CR means carriage return, means enter. Configure terminal. So if I put in this command from privileged mode, I can get to global configuration mode where I can actually configure the switch. So configure terminal and notice that the prompt changes to switch and then in between parentheses is config and then the hash, right, um, which means that I'm in global config mode. So there are three configuration modes that we've learned. Global config mode, and if I say exit, privileged exec mode, and I say disable, and user exec mode, right? User exec mode, to get from user exec mode to privilege mode, enable, hit enter. Now you're in privilege mode, privilege exec mode. To get from privilege mode to global configuration mode, configure terminal, and now you're in global configuration mode. And guess what? If you put a question mark, more commands. These are the commands for configuring the switch. Right here, there's a command for host name. So what we can do is, is we can configure the host name on the switch host name, and I'll put S1 for switch one. I hit enter, and you can see that instantly it goes from switch, right, to S1. I could say host name, Dan's switch, and now it's Dan's switch. Host name back to S1 for switch one. Okay, so boom. You just automatically change the configuration of the switch. Now, I want to save this to memory, right? If I, I mean, I want to save my configuration to uh, NVRAM, to the non-volatile RAM. I want to save this configuration. To do that, we can't, we don't typically do it from global config mode. So we're going to have to exit out of this mode. Let's just do a question mark to see how do we get out of here, right? So we could do an end. We can do an exit, right, things like that. So I'll say end this time. Boom, that takes me to privileged exec mode. And from here, to save the configuration, the command that you need to learn for the CCNA is copy run tab running dash config to the startup dash config. This means copy the running configuration in RAM to the startup configuration file in NVRAM, in non-volatile RAM. So we we do that. And then, right, copy running dash config, space startup dash config, destination file name startup dash config, yes. Just hit enter, 
and it will accept whatever's between the brackets, right? So hit enter and it says building configuration. It gives you return OK, and you just saved the configuration. Now, if I restart the switch, it will, when it starts back up again, it'll load the configuration file and remember that it's S1. So for instance, let's see if we can do a reload. Reload. Proceed with reload. Confirm. Enter. And you can see it's restarting the switch. It's loading the operating system from flash memory. It's this file. It's, it's basically unpacking that file. And it says it gives you the output from the show version command right here as soon as it boots up. And then it says re press return to get started. And boom, you're in. But remember, it's it, it doesn't say switch. It says S1 because we saved the configuration. All right. So you... You're learning line commands here. You're learning line commands. We're using the PC, and we are consoled into the switch from the PC, right? It's important that I used the PC because that's how it works in the real world. In the real world, I connect my PC to the switch, and then I use a program, a, a terminal emulation program like PuTTY here. Where is it? I open up PuTTY. And I say I want a serial connection to the COM port, oh, over the COM port, COM1, let's say. If you're using a USB adapter, you might have to change this to COM4, COM6, or COM9. But you'll hit open, and you'll have a connection to the switch. Right now, it can't open COM1 because I don't have any cable connected, and I'm not connect connected to a switch or a router or anything. So I can't, it won't do it, right? But here, in, in Packet Tracer, I open up the PC. I go to from physical, config, desktop. These are my desktop apps. There's my command prompt. Here's my web browser. Here's how I would configure IP addressing on the switch, on the PC, I mean, right? I can put in IP addressing on the PC, or I can use DHCP if I want, or I can statically configure. But what I'm interested in is the terminal emulation program like PuTTY. This is it right here. Click on that. Click OK. Hit Enter. And boom, I'm in the switch. OK. What do you think so far? Pretty good? All right, cool. Now, I have a bunch of videos on going over these initial configurations. However, I should let you know that I used to do all the videos for Chapter 2 in the curriculum. I did it when we had the CCNA 6, CCNA 5. This is CCNA 7. I did not do all of the videos, right? But um, you can see here that all of these videos navigating between iOS modes, right? These are good videos done by uh, one of the instructors in the Cisco Academy. See? This instructor is going to go over enable, disable, configure terminal, exit, end, control Z on the keyboard, right? And disable command. Right. Configure She's really terminal, good. Right. Exit, so I mean, I, it's good. Z. All right. These are these are helpful. Okay. Um, so you want to go through these and check these out. Um, you know, it shows you the help features goes over everything, right? So yeah, there's so much stuff that you can do. So in other words, yes, there are more things that you can do and you'll just get used to it over time. So for instance, I go into switch one, I say enable, okay? I type configure terminal, right? I'm here, yes, I can type end or I can type exit. Or I could do control Z and control Z takes me back to privileges exec mode, right? Configure terminal. I can also do control C and control C takes me out, right? So control Z, control C, right? There's all kinds of stuff, right? All right. Now let's, uh, you want to set the clock? Clock is a good one. All right, so 
Let's do it. So I think for doing the clock, I think we can actually do it from privilege exec mode. Let's check it out. So first of all, the clock. If I put a question mark here, you can see that there's the clock command. It's the second command in privileged exec mode. If I put a question mark, you can see it there, right? I think the clock is one thing we can configure from here, but maybe not. Clock, space, question mark. Yes. Clock, space, question mark. Set. Set the time and date. All right. So clock, set, space, question mark. This is good practice for learning how to work with commands in Cisco IOS, in Cisco Internet Work Operating System. All right. It wants the hours and the minutes and the seconds, okay? So right now it's 6.37 p.m. So I could say set uh, 06, um, 37, or I'll just say 30, yeah, 30, I'll say 39 uh, and zero, right? Incomplete command. What? Now, notice I said 639. It's 638 right now because there's more to do. So I'm kind of waited. So I put it two minutes ahead because I have more commands I have to do. All right, space, question mark. Now I can put the day of the month or the month. So right now we're in um, October. So I'll say October, question mark. And it's the third. So I'll put three and then space and question mark, right? So clock set 063900 space October space third and then question mark. And then the year in a four number format. So 2023 and boom, I just set the clock, okay? It's not quite 639 yet. So what I'll do is, is I'll wait till it says 639 and then I'll do an up arrow and I'll put the command in again, right? There it is, up arrow, hit enter, and boom, the clock is set. So now if I type clock, whoops, or I'm sorry, show clock, 639, right? And the seconds, um, UTC, um, Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Right. So now I have correct time. Once again, what were the commands? Clock, space, question mark. Oh, I got to put in the set command. All right. Set. If you hit enter, it says incomplete. Oh, okay. There must be more space, question mark. All right. I need to put in hours, minutes, and seconds in that format. Right. So, right. Zero six, 41 double zero, two minutes ahead, right? Space, question mark. I can put either the month or the day of the month. Let's try that. Let's try day first. Three, space, question mark. Now I need the month. October, space, question mark. The year, 2023, whoops, done. Clock set, the time. Now it's not 641 yet. So I'll wait, you know, a few more seconds. And then when it's time, I'll do up arrow on my keyboard. It loads the previous command and I hit enter and boom, it'll be the right time, right? So, right, we'll wait till this turns 641 and I'll put it in again. I'll overwrite my command and reset the time to 641, right? So I'm waiting for it, waiting for it. And come on, there it is, enter, done. All right, show clock, all right, and there's the correct time. All right, so that's one of the things that you'll learn how to configure in the chapter, right? Okay, um, cool. All right, we're doing pretty good, right? So there's more to learn. All right, so what else are we going to learn about the switch? All right, another basic thing to learn about the switch is how to put a password onto line console zero. In other words, if I type exit, 
I get this. If I hit enter, boom, I'm back in the switch in user exec mode. No password, no nothing, just anybody can enter. As long as they have a cable connected into your switch and there's no password on it, boom, right? They can go in and they can reconfigure your switch and they could delete your configuration. They can do all kinds of stuff, right? So if we want to put a little bit of security on this, just a small amount, we'll type enable, we'll type configure terminal, or command shortening, I can just put conf, which is short for configure, and T, which is short for terminal. And I can do conf T, and I'm in global config mode. And this time, what we want to do is, is we want to configure line console zero. There is only one console, and it's console zero. And that's what we're in right now. We're consoled in with a console cable. We're consoled into console zero right now, and we're going to configure it and put a password on it. So I put in line console zero, and you just entered a new mode, right? We went from user exec mode to privileged exec mode to global config mode, and we put in this command, and now we're in line configuration mode. And in here, there is different commands. Each different mode has its own subset of commands that are available in that mode. And so for this one, there is a password command. Password, and we're going to put a space, and then the password, which is we're going to put Cisco. Okay, just, well, you can, if I put a question mark, right, specify a hidden password will follow. It'll be unencrypted. So password Cisco. Now there is a password on line console zero. However, there is another command we're going to need if we want to actually be prompted for the password. We need the login configuration, the login command to enable for the operating system to actually ask us for the password. So when we log in, right, prompt for login, right? Like, so we put in password Cisco and then the login command. Okay. Then what we do is we say, all right, exit, exit again. And we want to save our configuration. Copy, run, tab, running config, start, tab, startup dash config. That's the full command. And hit enter twice, and you just saved your configuration. All right. So what did I do? Well, I'll do it again. Configure terminal. Boom. Line console zero. Password Cisco. Login. Then what I can do is I can do control C and jump all the way from line configuration mode to privilege mode. I said control C. Bam. All the way down to privilege mode. And then copy command shortening. Run start. Copy the running config to the start config. Command shortening. There is only one option that has R in it, R U N in it. There's only one option that has R U N in it. There's only one option that has start in it, and that is running dash config, startup dash config. So command shortening is very nice. You can't do that in Windows or Mac or Linux or anything. Command shortening is a Cisco iOS thing, right? What you can do on those systems is do tab completion and then tab completion and then hit enter twice. Okay, so we just configured the password on the uh, switch. So what I'll do is, is I'll say exit, press return to get started, and you can see that it's now prompting me for user access verification, it's prompting me for a password, Cisco. You won't see the password, exit, right? If I, when I type Cisco, you won't see it. It doesn't show you the, you know, the little um, password symbols. You have to just trust that it's there and you hit enter, right? It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't show you how many characters you entered. All right.
and now you're in. So, but now, right, once again, if you don't know the password, you can't get in, right? If I type Dan, nope. If I type Bob, nope. If I type Alex, nope. Bad passwords, right? If I type Cisco, I'm in. All right. So that's the type of stuff you're learning in chapter two. You're going to learn all of the basic entry-level commands that you need to set up a basic configuration on the switch. A basic configuration, all right? So here is a couple more basic configurations. I'm going to do this uh, for a few more minutes, and then I'll stop the recording. Um, and I'll probably have to do another video I might have to do another video conference on Thursday evening. No, Thursday I can't. I could probably do another one tomorrow evening, but not at this time. I would have to be at, uh, it would have to be around 6.30 I could do it. Yep, 6.30. Okay, I'll send out an announcement. All right, let's, let's do a couple more commands. All right, so you're in the switch and you have access to a few commands, right? You can run some show commands to get information about your switch. You could ping another device if you had an IP address. Um, you know, you could telnet to another device or SSH to another device, right? Remotely connect to another networking device, okay? You could run a trace uh, to trace a route to a device, okay? But if you want to configure the device, you have to put in enable to get to privileged exec mode. From here, you can get to global config mode. So let's put a password so that not anybody can just type enable to get to privilege exec mode. So what we're gonna do is we'll say configure terminal. And this time we're gonna say enable secret. So enable secret, which means enable secret password. And the typical one that we use in Cisco classes to start with is class. So login password is Cisco, enable password will be class, and it's going to be secret. It's going to be encrypted. Okay, so enter. All right, I just did it. Enable secret, and then the password class. I'll show you what I mean. Enable has two options, password unencrypted, secret encrypted. So I say, okay, I want secret. Then question mark. Then it says, specify the password that will follow. All right, I did class. So that, that was it. Now, we want to save the configuration. Control C, copy, run, start. Hit enter twice, save the configuration. All right, now I want to show you something. Before we test it, before we test it, I'm going to say, show me the running configuration. Show me the running configuration. Show run. All right, check it out. I say show the running configuration. It builds the configuration. It shows me what's running in RAM, okay? And it, this is the configuration, right? So it's iOS version 15. These three commands are off right now, these three settings, right? Because they've got the no in front of them. That means there's no timestamps for logging the date time in the milliseconds. There's no timestamps for debugging date time in milliseconds. And there's no um, password dash encryption. So this is a command that puts a very basic level of encryption all over the switch. However, here's one of the commands we did enter, host name S1. Here's my enable secret command, right? We did the enable secret and then the secret was class, the password was class, but we can't see class here. Instead, what we see is five, meaning this is an MD5 hash, and here is the hash. This hash is a hash of the password class, okay? And it's been hashed so you can't see it. That's, that's the secrecy, is that it's been hashed so you can't see it. All right, then you've got some more configuration settings down here. We hit more, 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 hit the space bar, space bar, space bar. And then down here, I want to show you at the bottom. Notice line console zero, password is 
Cisco. This is not hashed. It's in plain text. So if you could access this configuration file, if you could access the saved config, you can access the running config, you would see the password. Notice the login command. So the, we put these commands in there, right? Now, we could put a very weak form of hashing on this. If we say, go to, right? I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna activate this command right here, this, this configuration. Service space password dash encryption. See that? Service space password dash encryption. Notice it's got a no in front of it. We're gonna get rid of that no. So we'll go down here and we'll say configure terminal. Say service question mark. Notice one of the choices, password dash encryption. Encrypt system passwords with a very weak, <laughs> a very weak hash. So service, pass, hit tab, auto completion is your friend. Service password dash encryption, hit enter. Okay, done. All right. Exit. I'm going to show you another command here. Instead of doing copy run start, you can also do write to memory. Right? That's easier. However, write mem is not on the CCNA certification exam. <laughs> copy running config to startup config possibly is. Chances are this is neither. <laughs> Chances are this is not on the certification exam, but write mem is very short, right? All right. They do the same thing, right? So whether you want to say write mem or copy run start or copy running config, startup config, all the same thing. It's just saving the configuration. Now, show run. Notice there is the enable secret class hashed MD5 hash, spacebar, 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 line console zero, password. Remember it said Cisco here before. Now this is a type seven hash encryption. This is very weak hashing. Notice that um, it's not many characters, right? So uh, that is kind of a weak, it's weak keys. <clears throat> I'll show you what I mean. Um, right click, copy. I'll open up Google Chrome. Uh, and I'll say type seven. Password decrypt. Packetlife.net. Type 7. Cisco Type 7 reverser. Right? Type the hash. I'll just paste it in. Reverse it. Cisco. Right? Not a very good uh, one-way hash if I can put it into a website, click reverse, and it tells me what the password is. So, as you can see, not so cool. All right. Um, all right. Back to what we were doing. That is another command that you need to know. Also, oh, look at this. Show run. I'll go up to the top here. See how no service password encryption is now just service password dash encryption. That means by putting in this command in, in it, we basically turned it on, right? Um, so we could say service timestamps log date, time, and millisecond, and that'll get rid of the no, and it'll basically activate this default configuration. By default, it's off, but now it's on, right? So pretty cool. All right. All right, another thing that's kind of cool to do is set up a banner message of the day. So banner message of the day, so we'll say configure, configure terminal, and we'll say banner, question mark, 
MOTD, which stands for message of the day. So banner, MOTD, and then between delimiters, so between double quotes or between question marks or between semicolons or between single quotes or between whatever, we could put in our message. And typically the type of message you would see on a switch or a router is a warning for not trespassing to hackers who may be trying to enter your system. You let them know that no unauthorized access is allowed. Violators will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, right? So this is a banner message of the day telling you legally, you're not allowed to be in here, right? If you're seeing this, right, there's no unauthorized access allowed. Violators or trespassers will be prosecuted, right? So I hit enter, right? banner, message of the day, and then between delimiters, in this case, double quotes, I put a, you know, uh, a legal blurb, letting people know that, hey, you got in and you saw that message and you went in anyway, you weren't allowed, now you're, you know, being prosecuted, okay, right? You are not allowed to go into someone's house uninvited. You're not allowed to crawl through their window you're not allowed to open someone's door and enter their house, right? That's called trespassing, right? You're not allowed to enter someone's server or their router or their switch. So let's test to see if this works. So control C, write mem, exit. All right, now I'm out of the switch. I hit enter. It says, hey, what's the password? Cisco, all right, type enable. It says, what's the password? Class. All right, now I'm in, right? Notice that when I first got in, what message did you see? All right, we'll try that again. Exit, All right, hit enter. Notice right before you've entered, there is your banner message, right? Banner message of the day, letting you know, warning, no unauthorized access is allowed, right? You will be prosecuted if you're, if we find that, you know, if you've entered and and, uh, and we figure out your IP address and we figure out your location and blah, 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 you're not supposed to be in here. Okay, Cisco, enable, uh, class, and you're in. All right. All right, last but not least, what if you want to give the switch an IP address, right? Well, there's more commands you have to learn, but another command to learn is giving the switch an IP address. Let's put, let's do that one really quickly. Oh, by the way, we've been entering the switch and getting to the CLI, the command line interface, by going to the PC and going to the terminal and clicking OK, right? And which is cool. That's what we wanted to do. However, at any point, you could just click on Packet Tracer on this switch and then click on the CLI and boom, there's the command line interface. Now, in Packet Tracer graded activities, they will lock you out of this. So there are some graded activities coming up in Packet Tracer where you're logged into Packet Tracer using your Academy account. And if you try to click on the device, it won't let you, It'll be you'll be locked out completely. So the only way to get into the switch and configure it is the real way, which would be from a PC or a laptop or another device to console in, right? So setting up the IP address on the router or the switch in this case, configure terminal. All right, we need to go to interface VLAN one, which is our virtual interface Right, VLAN 1, all of the switch ports on the switch are in VLAN 1. So when we look at all those switch ports, Ethernet ports, they're all in VLAN 1 by default, right? So all of those switch ports 
go through VLAN 1. So we're going to put the IP address on the switch on VLAN 1. So we say IP address, and then let's just make up an address. Okay, we'll say 12.12.12.12. .12 okay, and then we'll, we got to give it a, a subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. All right, so I gave it the IP address 12.12.12.12, .12 subnet mask 255.255.255.0, and then no shutdown to turn the interface on. If you do that, we've given the switch an IP address, and we've activated, enabled the interface by doing a no shutdown command. And notice it tells us, hey, Log message, link five changed, interface VLAN one, change state to up. So now there's an IP address on this switch. So now we could test it out. However, this connection across the console cable is out of band connection, right? Out of band connection means it doesn't go over the network. It's a serial connection, requires no IP address. If we want to test to see if we can reach the switch by over the network, then we need another type of cable. We need this black Ethernet cable. So we click on the PC, fast Ethernet to the switch port. All of these switch ports are in VLAN 1, even the gigabit ones. So we can just pick one, and we should be able to reach the switch's IP address. So once again, if I click here on the green, whoops, Back here, fast Ethernet. If I click over here right on the light, yellow, whoa, I could pull it off, put it back on the switch, put it in one of these ports. Okay. Now, we're not going to be able to talk to the switch from the PC if the PC has no IP address. And if I go to the command prompt and I type IP config, all one word, you can see. I do not have an IP address. Okay, once again, command prompt on the PC, just like on a real PC, IP config, right? Here's my laptop, start, CMD, command prompt. And this is my laptop, <laughs> right? C users, Dan, this is Windows, IP config, right? There you go. Wireless LAN Wi-Fi. There's my IP address. 192.168.8.8. .8. Okay. Now here, zero, zero, zero. No good. All right. So go to IP configuration. IP address, we're going to say 12.12.12. .12 we can't give it 12 because the switch is 12. So you could give it, I don't know, 12.12.12.1. .12 .12 the subnet mask has to be the same, or it should be the same. 255.255.255.0. You do not need a gateway. You do not need a DNS server. You do not need anything else. Just 12.12.12.1 and the IP address, 255.255.255.0. Now, if I go to the command prompt, say IP config, you see there's my IP address. There's my subnet mask. All right, now I should be able to ping 12.12.12.12. Right? I'm pinging from the PC to the switch. And there I go. I'm getting replies. The first one timed out, but then I got three replies. Let's try again. Up arrow. One reply, two replies, three replies, and four replies from 12.12.12.12, .12 32 bytes, one millisecond, right? Set four packets, receive four packets, zero lost. All right, success. The switch now has the IP address on VLAN 1 of 12.12.12. .12 .12. And the PC has the IP address 12.12.12.1. All right, if you guys save this, I can use this little note here. I can say 
12.12.12.1. And over here, 12.12.12.12. Get my little selector tool again. All right, little labels. Okay, I've got a Ethernet cable running from the PC to the switch, and I've got the console cable from the PC serial port to the switch console port. All right, that's a good introduction.